So let's talk about the scene. First of all, it's in our blood. All we wanted to do was rock out, get high, get laid. It's a haze. In the 90s, you had bands like Monster Soup, Taste of Garlic, Wishbone Bush, Feared Alien Voodoo, Dive, The Hates, Hands Down, Dead Horse. And this was like the heyday of the metal years. Fucking metal to the max, and <laughs> Dead Horse was killing it. Dixie Waste. Spunk was huge. Oh. I was walking down the street in a Spunk shirt in London, England, and three people knew who they were. Academy Black. Joint Chiefs. You always got a show with Sprawl. Tread. Squat Thrust. Brown Paper Dog. 30 Foot Fall. Dinosaur Salad. Nonstop Bombers. Crazy Kill Mingus. Sugar Shack always put on a good show. In result, you had fans coming from out of town that wanted to play with these guys. The camaraderie that we had. Just one big community. It's a really tight town in this sense of, I guess you would say, family. We were inside the loop. We were original. We weren't playing covers, and that was something different. Hanging out, partying, having a good time. It was alive. It was, it was youthful. It shaped who I am today. Something that just took on a life of its own. Everybody was full of piss and vinegar, and we wanted to do something. We were at a perfect storm. Working really hard to pretend that we knew what we were doing. The scene kind of just came up as we had walked through the door. We wanted to be a part of something big, and we were. I think that we're all really fortunate to have experienced it with each other. It was rockin', it was hip-hop, it was a, a fusion of jazz and funk and metal. And all the shows and all the different clubs. Much like the city, you know, kind of a melting pot. Something was always going on. Most of the scene probably wouldn't happen without the accent. Emos to Shimmy Shack. Down the street, the Vatican. Hey, let's get real, too. There's a lot of drugs going on, too, so. Oh, no. well, that's why Emos was my favorite place to play. I literally remember feeling concerned, like, he shouldn't be running down Richmond without any clothes on. It wasn't like everybody had the same thing going on. You know, there was a lot of variety. I think that kind of worked against us. The success to their band was that they would not book very good bands with their band. They didn't back each other constantly. Everyone did on the surf. That's how you guys did it all these years? I was like, I actually kind of like having like bands that I respect play on the bill. As 20-year-old guys full of testosterone, everyone wanted to be number one. We were passionate. We were assholes. We treated each other like crap. We just started because we hated all the bands around town. We knew we couldn't suck any worse than them. We treated the people around us like crap, but uh, we thought that that's what being in a rock band was all about, I think, half the time. It's not for the lack of us having anything. We had it all. I don't think most of us really cared about getting famous. I think Houston kind of eats its own. It's like a curse that's on Houston. It's kind of a weird scene here. You're in Austin and you can be a little bitty small band that has hardly any following and you can make it huge. I think people really take for granted the bands that come out of here. I think that's why they didn't make it because we had no ambition. Our we're, we're totally rejected everything just like our name. There's something so pure about the complete absence of commercial ambition.